Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So the first question, Ustaz, how can I refrain from idle talk, especially with friends? I'm struggling, make dua for me. So first of all, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with the best of this world in the next. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you and I from those people who guard our tongues and who guard what we say and whom or for whom our tongues will be a witness for us on the day of judgment and not a witness against us. So how do we refrain from idle talk with friends? Here I'm going to talk about two or three uh, separate aspects. The first thing is uh, the selection of the friends that you have. It's very important. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, المرأ على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل A person is upon the religion of their close friend, so let every one of you look who he takes as a close friend. So when you're associating with people who they're normal kind of way of dealing with things is to talk about things that don't benefit them and things that might be even sinful then for sure you know there's no doubt that 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 one aspect is being careful about the friends that you keep the second aspect is being a person who is whose tongue is busy with other things and the very word idle talk is such a a powerful word because it shows us that the whole idea of idle talk is that our tongue is idle. It doesn't have anything else to do. So give your tongue something else to do. Make it busy with the remembrance of Allah. Make it busy with beneficial knowledge. Make it busy with learning and asking questions so that it doesn't become busy with other things. And the third thing is to develop a culture among your friends and among yourself or with yourself that whenever you fall into something, some kind of idle talk, you stop yourself and you remind yourself. It's very difficult in the beginning, but over time it will happen. You know, you stop even, for example, someone has a habit. Let's say, for example, someone has a habit of swearing. It's just a habit. You know, they've grown up with it, that every other word they say, they, you know, they curse and they swear, for example. And the person, it's hard for them. You know, they keep, keep falling back into it because it's a habit they've been in. So what I would suggest for this person is really simple, is that every time that word comes out of their mouth, they make istighfar, they say astaghfirullah, and they remind themselves about it, so I'm not going to say that again. And they carry on. And it may be a few days of slipping here and there, but by the end of it, that person has got rid of that habit. Same with backbiting. So a person I've got a habit of backbiting. The first time, as soon as they hear themselves do it, as soon as they hear their friends do it, it's astaghfirullah. You know what it is? I'm making a big effort not to do this. I need to remember about that. So inshallah, I'm not going to do it again. And they build a culture and a habit among themselves and their friends that they're not going to do that again. So thinking about who your friends are, obviously we're not suggesting you leave every single friend you have or anything like that. But, you know, thinking who your friends are, uh, making a habit of uh, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal and busying your tongue with, with that which is good. And when you do fall into it, clearly, you know, stop yourself and openly remind yourself and remind yourself you're not going to do it again. And over time that habit will be built, inshaAllah ta'ala.